thing. Don't worry, guys. I won't keep Greg on mute today. I won't. Uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about goal setting. And it's sounding like the gloves have come off. So if you don't know me, I'm Pip. And I run this group with my cohort, Greg. And here he is. Greg, introduce yourself. Hey, guys. I'm Greg. I run Original 72 Creative uh, over here in Vancouver, and we're a full-service website, graphic design, and digital marketing firm. Right, graphic design and digital marketing. We are a search and search and social firm focusing mainly on search. I didn't mention that. Oh, Greg, putting us both on screen. Now, did you guys see that when I loaded this up, Greg was actually on screen? If you're joining us today, say hi and tell me if you saw that. And uh, also maybe let us know that Greg's not on mute. Last week he was on mute for like 10 minutes. Um, what? I, well, okay, maybe not. Have people lost all that valuable information I told them? Total valuable information. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you guys know, but so Greg and I are different in this aspect of life. Quite different, actually. I'm right and he's wrong. Uh, but, you know, we all know that. No, no, no. <laughs> Everyone knows men are always wrong. I right. mean, come on. Right? It's true. Greg has a lot of sisters, so he's used to this kind of confrontational behavior. But today, we're not going to waste your time. We're going to talk about uh, how and why of goal setting. And I'm not sure if you set goals. Greg, I am looking for us on online. I'm not seeing us. Oh. I see us. I got us on. And uh, Lorna's here and Sherry's here. Oh, okay. Those, are, those are the only two people I can see at the moment. Oh, Del just joined us. Oh, nice. Got a couple of peeps. Hi, guys. Happy holidays. Um, okay. So we are getting into the how and the why of goals. Now, I just said to Greg before we started, I'm like, so Greg, goal setting really begins after you've set your goal, in my opinion. Now, doesn't that sound weird? To which I started laughing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so what I want, so when we goal set, the I guess the beginning part is writing down like getting all that stuff out of your head like what are your goals so you just do a brain dump or a brain map and write down everything you dream about now you can dream about more things next year right but there's this whole thing like you can have a three-year goal a five-year goal a 10-year goal a one-month goal but your number one goal now some people call it a hag, but i call it a wig it's your wildly important goal um and so for me, Greg, I'm talking about setting a goal for a year. That That's what I'm talking about here. And so I'm not going into all the ways you can mind map and do this and, you know, pick your goal. Picking your goal is just the beginning, right? Now, Greg, we were arguing a minute ago because I believe you have goals and then you're going to have sub goals, right? And you, what do you, what did you call them? Well, I, I consider those sub goals to just be um, a strategic uh, plan that is put in place to achieve your goals. So they're tasks that you define that will help you achieve what your goal is. And you refer to them, obviously, as sub goals, which I mean, they could be sub goals. But to me, it just sounds funny to have a goal and sub goals. Well, there's reason behind it. Um, <clears throat> There is reason. So uh, the reason is, okay, so um, let's do an example. So uh, next year I want to get better at doing video and content, right? That's my goal. Um, now I want to do a SMART goal, but I take out the A and R of the SMART goal. So it's M, what is it? SMT. So it's um, basically, you know, it's it's a thoughtful goal that you met that you can measure that has a timeline, right? So by 2020, I want to be able to do YouTube videos. And right now I'm only doing Facebook videos, right? Okay. So that would you be like 12 days, 12 days to meet that goal. Right. Well, that was my goal last year. <laughs> right? so, so I have this goal and uh, I create sub goals. So one of my sub goals would be to get healthy. Now, Although you may not think that makes sense, I would feel better, feeling better when I get on camera. So I know going to the gym makes me feel better. I know eating right makes me feel better. So if I incorporate that mm -hmm. in my life, that's going to help me achieve my overarching goal, right? Right. 
So how I would achieve that is the next big question, which, um, so the sub goal for me would be, you know, getting healthy. And what does that look like? Well, what that looks like is what my habits look like. And so if I'm going to slowly change my habits to reach that sub goal, which is going to propel me to my actual goal. Right. So th this is where, you know, sub goals, Makes sense. sub goals and habits work in line with one another. And, you know, this isn't, you know, this was something that happened to me yesterday. Like I was talking with somebody wonderful named Richard Pratt. He's a massage therapist that teach, teaches massage therapists to uh, manage their own businesses. And, you know, he's done a lot of goal stuff. And, I, you know, I know the basics of goal stuff, but for some reason it just dawned on me all of a sudden, if you've ever read the book Atomic Habits and you realize that it's the small little incremental changes we make that can propel us to our goals, right? And Richard saying, yeah, you know, it's sub goals and then it's habits. And I was like, oh yeah, right? Cause that's what I wasn't building in to my goal setting experience. And don't get me wrong. I was writing down like my goal for 2020 stuck on the wall. Like, you know, I've even gone so far sometimes as to write it down every day, but there's all these different ways to do goals. Greg, you're sitting there silently like, oh God, we're talking. Um, I'm listening to you. And <laughs> Enthralled, right? Enthralled. Thinking what I'm going to argue. <laughs> right? Yeah, you were going to argue, but you became agreeable. I think it's, I'm so convincing. What do you guys think? How do you guys set up your goals? Do you set up goals? <gasps> yeah, we just, we just think of them differently, but I, I agree with you on the habits thing. I think developing habits will definitely help you achieve your goal because you get in the routine of, you know, doing what you need to do to hit whatever target you've set. Yeah. Right. It's really interesting. Cause I mean, it comes down to, you know, I mean, I think the reason I'm so into this goal setting stuff is because, you know, this is where the analytics comes into play of your own life. Mm -hmm. right? So you learn analytics online and then all of a sudden you're like, Oh, I can relate this to myself. I will, take measures in the beginning and then keep looking back at them either weekly or monthly to see if I need to make adjustments. Right. Um, you know, okay. So there's another couple things to bring up in this and I know I get so excited, but, um, uh, the whirlwind. So in life, Greg, we live in the whirlwind. We wake up in the morning, especially as entrepreneurs, I find like, Oh my God, how often do you get up? You're like, okay, I know what I'm going to do today. And the phone rings and you get an email and oh my God, pipe bursts. Like your, your, your life is hectic, right? And so with goal setting, we have to realize that um, we only have 20% of our time that we can really dedicate to a really focused goal right in a, in a day because the whirlwind is happening and the world you got, so you got to kind of, accept that about life i think that though these things come up and if you look at time like it's elastic uh instead of it's that it's linear like it it expands right as like say a pipe bursts for some reason we didn't have we wouldn't have had time for that in a day but all of a sudden it happens and we make time and we still get our other stuff done mm -hmm. so uh but the whirlwind being 80 percent of our life um we have to take that into account when we're making goals so that we can make our habits like 20% so they don't overtake our life, right? Like, you know, these fad diets and things that people go on that are like, they take over your life, you're starving or you're eating a lot of meat or maybe just fruit. And all of a sudden that's all you can focus on, right? So that's not how to do goals. No, no, I'm not seeing anybody comment. I, oh, uh, oh, okay. No, there's someone two. likes your guitar. Oh, <laughs> hi guys. Mona, David, Dell. Yeah. Yeah, what, Sherry, uh, Lorna, um, guys, do you set goals? I'm so excited, Greg. It's it's hard to contain myself on this stuff. Um, you so Greg, are you gonna set a goal this year? I I'm going to set a goal just for you, Pip. Oh, okay. Now, yeah. uh, is it gonna be a business goal or a personal goal? Are, are It'll you be a business goal. Okay. Yeah. I'm feeling a little um, shy about sharing my goal, to be honest. So I, I, I wanted to 
just talk a little bit, I guess, because I said I would set a goal and, and, um, I'm going to hold you to that, my friend, why, why I'm setting the goal I am. And, and also a, a couple of things to think about when you guys are setting your goals. Um, and I think an important thing to to look at is your past year mm. and consider over the course of your last year what worked, what didn't work, you know, come up with two, three things that uh, that went well for you and uh, maybe two or three things that you think you could have done differently. And when you come up with these things over that past year, it'll give you ideas to um, what maybe to set for a new goal for your following year. Um, the other thing you probably want to do is um, just reaffirm what your business um, vision is mm. and make sure you're on top or on target for what your vision is for your overall business and, and just make sure you've got that straight before you also set a couple of your goals. And then you can come up with the goals, hopefully, with that review process in what you're actually going to set as a new goal for your upcoming year. And knowing that you've come you've sort of reviewed that stuff it will lead you into what Pip was talking about to be able to take some of those tasks and say, okay, well, if I do this better, that'll be a micro goal or a smaller goal that I will have to focus on to achieve my larger goal. Yeah. So just a couple of ideas for people when they're considering setting their goals for their next year is to, make, to, to definitely review the past because that's what you have to go on how well you're doing, how bad you're doing, you know, what went wrong, what went right, and putting it together so that you got a good goal for your fall, for your upcoming year. Right, that's so true. Oh, yeah, so uh, I don't know about you, but so like I've done goals and we do them on a big piece of paper and we'll fold them up and then we leave them for the year over there. Right? We're not writing them down every day. You know, sometimes this stuff works. And, uh, you know, but the, the reflection the going back and looking and you know, then how can you do better this year? How are like, I find goal setting is pretty personal, right? Um, but yeah. Uh, so there's that. And then Greg, I got, you know how you said, ask yourself questions, really awesome question that I went through with some, a friend of mine that we're doing like last year and looking at next year. And, uh, the question was, wait for the pause for the pause I know um, the question was what um, did you fail at last year that taught you a really valuable lesson right and um, yes we all have stuff like that where we want to do better and if you don't you're amazing my god um, but uh, I thought that was a really great question to ask yourself because I did have a couple things I would say were failings you know I and they but they taught me so much yeah. So I thought that, you know, th this is why this stuff is so fun. Right? And that's why it's so important to think back on those things and make sure you don't continue doing those things or, you know, make sure they're eliminated completely so that you can focus on the things that did work for your business. And if you focus on only the good things and, and, and strive towards that, your next year should be better. Yeah. So, and the habits are kind of like key performance indicators or lead measures. So if you take a habit and you need to, you know, something you already do and you use that to catapult yourself to, you know, you change your habits, but if you measure your change, then, um, you can celebrate those wins. And I find in our businesses, especially that we, if you work alone, or, you know, you work, yeah, by yourself, even in an office, you often forget what you've accomplished, right? During the day. So, I mean, this works for during the day, this works for your year. There's, I think there's a formula to achieving things and feeling achievement. I think everybody has their own formula, but I really think that you can push yourself really well with a, with a kind of strategic approach. So exciting. I feel that could go hand in hand with making sure you're accountable um, to yourself and, or if you work for yourself, 
um, as a as a freelancer solopreneur have someone that can keep you accountable that knows what your goals are um, and they can they can review with you or you know ask you in a weekly or monthly meeting okay how are things going where where did where did you what did you do how did where did it go wrong where did it go right uh, but but keep keep on top and keep yourself accountable. Yeah, like a peer mastermind or even a buddy, a friend, and meet maybe once every two weeks or once a week. That's a, it's a solid plan. That's a solid plan, right? I mean, yeah, uh, I I love this stuff because I mean we even do it in the group. I don't know if you guys know, but those weekly, hey, what are your marketing goals for the week? And then at the end of the week, you know, what are you happy you accomplished? If you compare the two, you know, um, you know, so even goal like goals can. They get smaller and smaller and smaller and, and fill into your day. Um, I wanted to bring up a point. Now, I do something really funny, Greg, when I set a goal. Mm -hmm. I do it every year. Uh, and I change my number one password to what my goal is. And then, like, and I make it a smart goal. So it's got a measure in there and a timeline. And I mean, and it's just something. So anytime I'm typing it in, you know, um, I'm, I, I remember my goal. I'm striving. How long, how long is your password? <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, like a good sentence, uh. <laughs> but it, it's fun. It works. I don't Do you guys have tricks you do to set your goals? I really want to know what other people do. Um, it's all That's kind of an interesting way to do it. Yeah. Because you're reaffirming yourself every time you type that password in, although with password savers, a lot of the time you don't have to type the password in all the time. So major password in. Oh, I'm thinking of using LastPass. That's what happens when you use LastPass. You should always have to type in a password, my friend, I think. Well, like you, the browser will remember usernames and passwords for you, right? Like, and you just choose, oh, this, this account, right. log in again. You don't have to, and I come up, against this all the time because clients will call me hey greg what's my password for email or logging to the website i'm like i don't know you said it <laughs> you should remember it I, not like i go in the system and i look and say this is what your password is i don't know your passwords right. david saying he loves LastPass, and i just want to comment on you now there's some really good comments which we'll get to definitely after because they're a bit longer but uh sherry is it sherry that's saying 2020 she's going to simplify i like that um and it's just hard to rip off the band-aid and step back it is goal setting you know it's not a one-time thing it's it's got stages right that whole mind mapping getting all that stuff you know how in harry potter mm -hmm. uh, or takes the 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 wand to his head and he puts all his thoughts in the pensive kind of like that for your your dreams and goals putting them on paper i like that show by the way i do i'm, I'm a fan of harry potter um so yeah uh goals are fun but they're they can be really stressful you know because what happens if you don't hit them or you you know you've created a goal that's just like so you want to own the world well that might not happen right but goals should scare you greg a little right do you think that? Yeah, a goal should be challenging, definitely. It shouldn't be easy, but it also shouldn't be, like, too out there. Right. You need to make sure your goals are also achievable goals. You need to push yourself, but you will just get frustrated if your your goal is set way too high. Now, you said you were going to set a goal. This is going to be really fun. Are you going to do that mind mapping or pensive um, to paper? Thing with Jamie, maybe? Ooh. No. You're gonna do it on your own? You're just gonna set your goal. Are you gonna tell me your goal? I have my goal. I, I know what I'm gonna what my I know what my goal will be. Are you sharing it? As I said, I'm a little bit shy about sharing my goal. It's a big one. I can I can share it. Mine's mine's not huge. It's just simple. You know I'm not um a huge goal setter. True. Um after so long. I kind of just I'm in my wheelhouse and I'm rolling along. <laughs> so, but I've always said 
my best clients are law firms. Oh. So my 2020 goal okay. will be to actively um, get mm. law firms as clients. I, I hear blogging in your future. Because if you do blog posts for for law firms, you know, I hear like, ooh, ooh, okay, guys, you heard it here. And if you've got a goal that you're willing to share, put them in the comments because well, we want to know. It's cool. This is so, exciting and thrilling. So now I have to um, Some goals. Put, my, put my agenda together on actually how I'm going to achieve my goal of getting more law firm clients, which I haven't done. But that is going to be my 2020 focus is a focus on law firms. I like that. So anybody listening, if you work with a law firm and they need a new website, you know where to go. There you go, Greg. Happy holiday plug. Uh, yeah. I like that. I like that. So, yeah, I like I like that goal. That is achievable. You know what? I think we should visit that every month. Now, I have a monetary goal. Um and so it's going to take a lot of work and I have no idea how I can grow large enough to make the money I want to make because I don't have all the time in the world. So I think that's why I'm apprehensive about actually like saying it out loud to the world, you know, but, um, Alexander's joined, Alexandras joined us. Hey, um, Greg, do you have any, we have, we got nine minutes to spare. I think I got so excited. I was just like, I'm just going to spill the beans on the goals. Um, Okay, so I mentioned lead measures and lag measures. Mm -hmm. I need to actually say where that comes from. If you guys, uh, there's a book called The Four Disciplines of Execution. Really good book. Uh, and that's where it comes from. Uh, so that's where the lead measure and lag measure, and it's for bigger businesses, but a lot of the juicy content is super good. So there's that, and I mentioned Atomic Habits, uh, which is also a very, very good book. Um, I'm not affiliated with any of these, but I have found that they've helped my business, right? Um, tips and tricks. One other thing to do or two other things is the reverse engineer your goal, um, which would be take your goal and then try to step it backwards. I find this really hard to do sometimes when you have a really big goal or a goal that you've never achieved before because the steps aren't clear. So... But I think you can, if you reverse engineer it, and then if you check in monthly, you can see, right? So you reverse engineer it, and then you find out what you have to do every week or every month or, you know, every quarter. Well, that sort of reminds me, you mentioned when we were <clears throat> preparing Tuesday uh, for today's topic, that one of the, you know, for yourself and, and for me and anybody else that puts out proposals, um, you typically have a closing rate, mm -hmm. you know, of, yeah. of the number of proposals you set. And um, you reminded me of that and how you could actually do amazing projections on your revenues based on the fact that you close at a certain percentage. You work, then you can work back from setting your goal of, you know, X dollar figure mm -hmm. per month back to how many proposals do I need to send out to achieve my um, success rate in getting those projects to make that number. Yeah. So you can, so that reminded me when you're trying to set a goal and then work back, you just reminded me of, of that process and you're going to have a larger goal this being a sales target and you're going to be able to say, well, how am I going to reach that goal and work backwards to how you actually achieve that goal um, by one of those processes where you have a, a, a certain success rate in your proposals. You know, you have to send out on average this many proposals per month to be able to get this many projects mm -hmm. to make that dollar figure. Yeah, it's so true. And, uh, yeah, I'll be doing that. Seeing your closing rate is interesting. It's kind of, it's it'd be the same thing for, say, finding a job, right? If you send out 10 resumes and you don't get a response, you might want to change your resume, right? It's just like, so if you have 10, you you know, you're, you get called every time. 
with, you know, when you send out your resume, but every time you go for a job interview, they don't hire you. You need to look at why they didn't hire you, what you would change, right? And not that you know why they didn't hire you, but what would you change about what you did to improve? So it's, I think it's about the constant improve and reflecting and yeah, those KPIs, those money, you know, numbers and knowing your closing rate and how your sales goes. Like for instance, I know I sell better in person, right? So I'm doing in-person things this year, which I will tell you is a little challenging because it's way easier to hide behind a screen a little bit, even though you're not hiding. Right? Now, would you change goals or set new goals throughout the year? Um, I, well, okay. So if I had a, a money goal and, you know, at the first quarter, I realized that, you know, I'm 25% uh, away from my goal for that quarter, I would have to add in that to the next quarter or, and, um, I would also want to look at, you know, what I was doing so that I could improve upon it. So yes, I would change those goals because they would have to increase. Would I decrease or no, but yeah, you, I mean, goals, every, this stuff isn't written in stone, right? You have to work with, you know, things that come up, you know, if there's health things or family things, stuff like that. But it's about revisiting them, I think, often, like monthly. Um, if you use sprint systems, you know, every two weeks, right? And a sprint system is what they use, developers use to launch a product, right? So with code and the editing it and fixing it and um, reiterating over it and like going in two or three week cycles. Mm -hmm. um, so doing that with goals too, because that's how, I think that's how we most improve. It's so easy to forget what we've done because yesterday is a little bit blurry. It's foggy, you know? So to, to manage the fog, um, for instance, to manage the fog, it's good to document things. And we see this specifically from Google Photos. I don't know if you know, but I could look at last year to the day and be like, oh, it snowed. But I can't remember that. It's so foggy. I don't know. It snowed in our January or something last year, I thought. My wife can remember that stuff. Oh, can she? Oh, God. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, you know, we're all, we would all be talking about something, and all of a sudden she's like, oh, yeah, that's the day that this happened, or blah, blah. And I'm like, right? I don't remember <laughs> that. Like, <laughs> I don't get it. Corey's joined us. Chuck's joined us. And I said, Alexandra, hey, guys, we're almost done for today. Um, we are talking about goal setting and I did make the comment that setting goals happens after you've picked your goal. Um, but that's a whole thing. So go back and listen to the replay. If you haven't seen it, send us some love if you're still listening, cause we love those love and those hearts. And, uh, Greg, we should probably get into, um, saying happy holidays to everybody. We are coming on next week. Is it next week? We're off. We're off next week. We're taking it's a week off. Hold boxing, boxing Day. We're taking Boxing Day off. Right? Boxing Day. So we'll see everybody in the new year. Yeah. And Greg, do you remember what we're talking about in the new year? God, no. Oh, my God. It's Come on. It's so fun. Um, we're talking about Excel. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, we're, we're talking about celebrating the past and looking forward. So hmm. also a part of the goal setting. I find this stuff. You know, with goal setting and life and analytics and what we do in work, it all kind of blends together. And there, se there seems to be this secret system, right? I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, maybe I should listen to one of those books about how all those people make a lot of money. The, the millionaires. How millionaires live. God, I can't stand those books. Oh, no? I, Not that I've read any, but I do, when I see them, I'm just like, yeah. You probably have a lot of stuff in there that everybody knows, but you're just one of the lucky ones that uh -huh. was able to follow through with with those things. Because I feel most of the time our holdbacks are ourselves. Oh yeah, it's true. It's a uh, it's a big deal when you know the talking to yourself, your head, your uh, subconscious. What is your subconscious saying to you? Right? Mm -hmm. it, do you set a goal and then say? Do you, you might not even hear it. It happened so fast, but that small, tiny voice, it's like, you can't do it. You're a failure. You know, you suck. You shouldn't be doing this. That crap has to go. That's what stops us. 
right? Mm -hmm. It's so hard to catch it though. Man, man, that little voice is fast sometimes. Um, I notice it in the waking hours, like when I get up and I'm quiet in the morning. I'm like, I've actually told myself, I'm like, man, you shouldn't talk to yourself like that. You wouldn't be friends with yourself if somebody said that to you, right? If you, yeah. I think it'd be interesting to come up with a list of 12 things you, you're you scared to do or think you can't do. Mm. And then prioritize them in, in whatever order you feel like knocking them off the list and take one each month and try to do what it is you think you're scared to do next year. I challenge everybody to do that. Right. You know, okay, before we go, David saying head brain stuffs, stuffers and brain and, and gut brain buffers. Interesting. It's true. Cause when Greg, you said, um, it's tough uh, to say, <laughs> it is hard, it's tough to say, but when you said, you know, pick something that scares you and do it, you know, I generally thought of like bungee jumping and I will never do that. Cause well, but the fear, like my stomach like dropped. I was like, Oh God. Right. But I'm not, and it doesn't, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be something like in your personal life. It could be any aspect of your life, personal business, and, whatever, yeah. just something that you've been shy or scared to do or don't think you can do. Have you ever, Greg, asked for a free coffee? Huh? Have you ever asked for a free coffee from Starbucks? I, I don't go to Starbucks. Okay. I'm not a Starbucks fan. Okay. Any coffee shop? Yes. Have you? No. Okay. So that's one of the challenges in some some guy said. But if you, you know, put yourself out there and you know, you jokingly ask for a free coffee, you know, I think 70% of the time you might get one. And it's a big fear thing for people if you know, to ask for things. So that's a great way to get over that. Yeah, and everybody knows if you don't ask, you're not going to get it. Right. So. so true. Greg, we're out of time. All um, right. Happy holidays, guys. We love you guys. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah, everybody enjoy their Christmas uh, holiday. Happy New Year, and we will see you next year. Next year. And if you do write down those 12 things that you're afraid of, maybe tell us you did it. Or if you're doing your goals, let us know in the comments, and we will see you next time. Okay, bye. Bye, everyone.